Hey guys, it's Kira and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I forgot to film an intro and an outro when I was actually filming the video, so here I am doing it now. Here is the rest of the video. I hope you enjoy. Please ignore the random bits of my hair that just fly around. They're really annoying me while editing, never mind you while watching. Also ignore that one side of my head for some reason looks greasy. I promise you it's not grease. I literally washed it that morning, but I promise you I am hygienic. <laughs> I have no idea why, but recently lots of people have actually been messaging me and asked me to tell them how to write a song and how the process works. So I thought because a lot of people were interested that I would do a whole video on it. But I know that a lot of people would like to know how to write a song, but don't know where to start, don't know what to do, think that you need to be able to play an instrument, which by the way, you don't. Or you think you need to be a good singer. You don't actually need to be any of those things. There are a lot of successful songwriters in the music industry who can't play instruments or can't sing. Sometimes even both. Or maybe you're good at English and want to try your hand at writing songs, then honestly, just give it a go. You might write the next chart topper, who knows? If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Kira. I'm a singer, dancer, performer, and student. Please subscribe if you are new. It would really mean the world to me if you could. So, there are two ways you can go about writing a song. There's one way which is a bit easier and recommended if you don't know how to play an instrument. Or there's another way which is usually the starting point that most people use and if you use if you play instruments or sing then that's where you would start. The first way that you can write a song is you can go onto YouTube, type in instrumental, songwriters backing track, songwriting beat, anything along those lines and basically just find anybody's video with the sort of vibe that you like, the genre that you like. If you're going to write a ballad you can get like a piano composition that somebody's written. But if you don't know how to play an instrument and you need a good starting point for a song then this is definitely something you should do. The second option would obviously be to use an instrument. I play the guitar, ukulele, drums, piano, flute, like there's a, quite a few instruments that I play and pretty much any of those apart from the flute and the drums I could use to write a song. I usually start out on either piano or guitar. More recently, I've been writing a lot more songs on the guitar, but when I first started out and I didn't really know how to play the guitar, piano was quite good because it's quite easy to learn chords. When you are creating your own song, you literally just pick a chord progression that you like. You can either look up popular chord progressions online, or you can just find some chords which fit nicely together in the key that you've chosen. Now you don't have to know music theory extremely well to be able to do this, but it does help if you do know your music theory because you might be choosing chords that aren't in the right key. Just make sure it sounds nice to the ear so that you're not writing to something that just doesn't work. The most popular chord progression used in most songs across lots of different genres is one, five, six, four. So for example, if you're in the key of C major, then one would be C, five would be G, six would be A minor, and four would be F, which would sound like this. repeat and that is a basic chord progression that you can use there's also lots of others but that is what I would say is the most popular one they are very easy chords to play they're pretty much the first chords you would learn if you're playing the guitar or the piano but those chords would be a very good starting point if not you could write in F major G major D major there is also minor keys so if you don't know music theory very well and you're only just writing a song just because you know why not the difference between major and minor it's kind of hard to explain a major chord uses the first, third, and fifth degree of a major scale, and a minor chord uses the first, flattened third, and the fifth degree of a major scale. I'm just gonna give you an example of on the piano. So this is an E chord. My fingers are placed on E, G sharp, and B. So that is an E major chord. If you wanna make it minor, you flatten the third, which means you take it down a semitone. So now my fingers are on E, G, and B. It's pretty much the same for any of us as well. If you know the chord of A, you just move your finger down from C sharp to C. So that is something you would have to know if you were to understand chord progressions. But if you're using the instrumental YouTube backing tracks or sort of, you won't need to know any of that. That is just some basic music theory that might be helpful if you are playing chords. If you don't own a piano or guitar, which are quite expensive and you don't want to go into getting that yet, but you want to start out with songwriting, a cheap instrument that you can buy is a ukulele. This is my ukulele. I haven't actually played it in a while, but this is what it looks like. It's very small, very easy to use, and if you just Google ukulele chords, it will basically give you a sheet with all the chords, and there's a lot of very easy chords, and then you can work your way up to playing harder ones, just like you would with a guitar, except this is a lot cheaper than a guitar, and if you want to start out with songwriting, I would say ukulele is a very good place to start. I think that ukulele was about £30. I can't remember where it was from. So once you've got your backing track or your chords, obviously the next step is the lyrics. 
a way that I use is I think of a topic that I want the song to be about. For example, if I'm thinking about unrequited love, which is what a lot of my songs are about. So you think of the topic you're going to want to use, you play your chords, and you can either just sing random things over it, or you can write down some ideas of words or phrases that you want to use. My biggest suggestion that I would use that I do every time I write a song is I literally just play chords, think about the topic I want to write about, and see what comes out of my mouth. Some of what comes out of your mouth might actually be really, really, really good. So I would recommend filming yourself. But when you're just starting out to play, you can record it. And then if there's anything that you forget that was, you were like, oh, that was really good, but I can't remember what it was, you can go back and listen to it and then you can play it again and it will sound the exact same. I understand that finding a topic to write about can be quite difficult. You can write about your own stories and things that have happened in your own life, which is probably the best way to do it, but you don't have to go too personally into it if you don't want to. You can make up a little story that changes a bit from what actually happened, but it makes the song a lot more personal. You'll relate to it a lot more and it will come more naturally when you're trying to write it. If you write about something that you don't know about, then it will be quite difficult to do yourself justice and actually do a really good song. You don't need to do that. It's not essential, but it, I would just say that it would help if you did do that. A big tip I would say is don't overthink it. Honestly, just sing whatever comes out of your mouth because it might be really good, it might be really bad, but it doesn't matter. You record it, you see if you like it, and you can change lyrics where you want to. I wrote a song in July last year. I wrote it in like an hour or two or something. And then in November, I went to play it back because I was like, I haven't played this song in a while. And I changed like a whole verse because I didn't like it. Another key part of songs is obviously rhyming. If you don't know how to rhyme, you're not very good at like doing poems in school or whatever, you can just look up rhyming words. You can sing a line and you're like, oh, I like that line. And then pick out the word at the end of the line, type it into Google, say what rhymes with blank. And then it will give you all the rhyming words that you can use. And then you can fit it into the next line or the line below. The next really important thing is the structure of a song. Now, most songs will obviously be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, or a similar sort of pattern. I saw this thing once online. I don't know where it was. I don't know if I can find it again. But it said, the chorus is for the fans. The verses are for the super fans. So basically, if you hear a song, you might know the chorus really, really well, but you don't know anything about the verse. For example, a song I have this experience with is Royals by Lord. I love this so song and I think Lord is an incredible singer. I know a bit of the first verse, but honestly, if you tried to make me recite the second verse, I would not have a clue what to say. I know the chorus back to the front. And it's like that a lot of times. For example, if a song blows up on TikTok, only the chorus is usually in the video that blows up. So the chorus has to be really, really good, really memorable. If you're writing a song that you're gonna release, you're gonna want people to be like walking around the house be and won't be able to get it out of their head. Not in an annoying way, but be like, oh, this song's so good, I can't get it out of my head sort of thing. Obviously the verses are very important. This is where most of your story is told. The key idea you wanna get across in your song is going to be in the chorus, but the verses are gonna shape the story. The last key part of your song is the bridge. The bridge is completely different from all the other parts of the song and it stands out because it's not the same. It doesn't sound at all like the chorus or at all like the verses. It usually goes between two choruses and it's completely different and continues the story in a different way. A good example of this would be Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. The bridge starts when she goes and so on. That is the bridge because it is completely different from the rest of the verses. Someone who is very, very well known for her incredible bridges is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is the queen and the master of writing bridges in songs. She is incredible at it. Some of her bridges are some of the best bridges I've ever heard in my life. There's some of her songs that I don't even like, but the bridge just makes me like it. The song Out of the Woods. I find that song too repetitive and I don't like it, but I adore the bridge. The bridge of Getaway Car. Wow. The bridge of All Too Well masterpiece. The bridges can even end up being the best part of the song and it's because they are different and some people prefer the bridges because they don't like the sound of the rest of the song. That's fine but as long as you have a catchy chorus, a verse that tells a story and builds up to the chorus and a bridge that sounds powerful and is different and a completely new part of the story to what you've already told in the rest of the song, I'm sure you will be absolutely fine. You don't have to have the same structure as every other song. There are lots of different song structures and you can even completely finesse the system and choose your own structure, that is absolutely fine. However, if you are new to songwriting, I would suggest using the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus structure just because it's easier and you don't have to figure out how to work your song. If you're more experienced with songwriting, first of all, why the hell are you watching this video on how to write a song when you know how to write a song? 
Second, you can change it up, do what you want with it. You probably already have experimented with that anyway. I've done a lot of songs where I've actually started off with the chorus. You may know a lot of pop songs that actually start off with the chorus and then go into verses and swap round. That is absolutely fine. That is something you can do. I know I keep going back to Taylor Swift, but it's the best examples I'm going to give. But an example of a song that starts with the chorus and then goes into the verse afterwards is Bad Blood. From the first second, she goes, Cause baby, now we got bad blood. That is the most well-known lyric of the entire song. That is the chorus. And it's a good way to start out if you want to draw people in straight away. And then if they like the start of the song, then they know they'll hear it again later. With titles, I honestly wouldn't think about giving your song a title until you've completely finished it. Some people start off with a title and that's what they base it around and then change it later if they want to. But honestly, it would be best to write your song and then see what the key sort of theme is or a key phrase that you've used and put that as the title afterwards. Make sure the song is long enough. Sometimes if you're just starting out, you'll either write a song that's too short and like a minute and a half or something because you don't, you're don't, you not experienced enough to know what you're doing to write enough of it, or it's too long because you've got carried away. Now, obviously a typical song is between three and four minutes. That is sort of what most songs are. There are some songs that are like five minutes, but unless you're a really, really popular artist, no one's gonna listen to your song for five minutes. Hate to break it, do you? Something I would make sure of, especially if you're writing the song on the guitar, make sure you note down if you've used a capo, capo, whatever you want to call it, I call it a capo. If it's called a capo, feel free to shout at me in the comments. Make sure you note down what fret you've put it on if you have used one because you might come back to it and have not written that down and it is a key part. Once you've finished writing your song, there is one important question that you need to be able to answer. Would you, the writer of the song, listen to the song? Do you like it enough to hear it on repeat? Because if, for example, if you are releasing a song, the week of release, and even when it's being mixed and mastered, it will you will have to listen to it hundreds of times. And by the time it comes out, you don't want to be sick of it. Because if it blows up or you've got a gig to do, you're going to have to play that song. And you don't want to be bored when you're performing your song because that will make the audience feel bored even if they love the song. So if you would listen to your song and you love it enough to hear it hundreds of times and you are proud of your work, then that is the most important thing. If you wouldn't listen to it, probably wouldn't do anything with it, but it's good to build your songwriting experience by writing songs on a regular basis. Get a day a drawn through the suburbs and pictured I was driving home to you. That is the end of this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope it's helped some of you out. I've never done anything really like this before on my channel, but it's something that I am very knowledgeable about and something I'm very passionate about. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I thought I could help some of you out. Um, I hope you've learned something today. If you have anything you want to ask me, anything you want to let me know, anything you want to tell me about, um, then feel free to tell me in the comments. I always reply to all of my comments and I really appreciate that you guys want to interact with me. Remember to follow all of my social media accounts which will be linked in the description down below and my Instagram usernames will be on the screen now as I don't put them in the description for personal reasons. Thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!